back ladies and gentlemen the black top till them the fam milan yo erica hello lambo what it do mike j hey <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen it is time to get to know what the hell be going on in these streets jesus lord christ of god church of latter-day saints it is time for the segment known as headlines with miss milan what's up <gasps> baby What's up? Y'all already know how this go. I ain't a journalist, but I know this information, so I want y'all to know it too, because we nosy. So we gonna get into these week's headlines, and you already know what time it is. Chris Brown! Christopher Maurice <laughs> Brown! <Hell laughs> yeah. Baby, when I That's say... I when I say... <laughs> When I say he set this internet on fire, baby, he set this internet on fire. Rapper Hannick. Uh-uh. Hello? Trapper, Trapper Trapper Hannick. Hello? Trapper Hannick. Trapper Hall. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. That's what we gonna call it from now. Just off the straight for Just off the straight for CB. Where'd you find that? Trapper Hannick. Right. Trapper Hannick. Trapaholics mixtapes. <laughs> and the wildest part is if you really know what <laughs> Sabahetic really look like, it's the exact opposite. But thank yeah. you, Chris Brown, for putting that on. Because we already knew that Chris Brown and Quavo was beefing. And allegedly, this comes off the strength of them both having a romantically linked situation with actress Karushi Tran. <sighs> Uh, it, is, it is what it is. Hey, that's still one of the, like, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, so on Chris Brown's song, let, we're going to get into how this was in- introduced. So on Chris Brown's song, Freak, he released a song where he mentioned uh, Quavo's name, stating that he didn't really deal with him too hard. So a day later on a song called Tinder, Migos rapper appeared to fire back at Chris Brown regarding the breakup between Karuchi Tran and Brown and citing their domestic violence past. Following up that response now, which has the internet in, in a tizzy, Chris dropped the weakest link on April 20th. Ooh. Boy. When I say, <laughs> when I say I woke up that morning... And the internet was in a tizzy. I listened to that diss track 15 times back to back. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Because I didn't know that Chris had it in him. I, I knew he had the rapping in him. But I didn't know that battling I mean, would be. If you're a fan of a fan, mixtape fan, you probably know Chris got them bars for real. Yes, but we... Uh, we talking about regular rapping and battling. Yeah. This man. He a Virginian. You know what? And on top of just from being Virginia. from VA, yep. Chris is also a Taurus. Can y'all just leave <laughs> the fuck alone? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she is familiar with the bell already. <laughs> Can y'all just leave us alone? Baby Chris Brown said, I was minding my business. And people have been spitting that. Um, I think it's corny at this point to keep bringing up his um, abusive past. I th- I'm like, I that is too, so, because- uh, that is a blip um, in a moment in time in mm-hmm. his career, not his career, well, his life. I'm glad that you said that because mm-hmm. we're going to get to that. Yeah. So in Chris Brown's response to Quavo, he allegedly, he allegedly 
stated or gave some type of intuition or, mm. you know, kind of situation that him and Sweetie had some type of sexual okay. encounter while Not her and... Hey, I the, see you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> While her and the Migos rapper was still together. Woo. So that was that was like, whoa, okay, Chris, hold up. He also brought up that elevator incident that happened between him and Sweetie, which mm-hmm. was in response to Quavo bringing up mm-hmm. a domestic situation that happened with Chris. So I understand you, you going tit for tat at this point. Mm-hmm. But the line that had everybody like, wait a minute, mm-hmm. was the line where he mentioned Mama. take off. Mama. Period. In the line, he said, R.I.P. Take Off. He was the only real one that got true respect. Crazy how he died. Everybody wish it was you instead. And in the line, in the background, it said, oh, hit the bell. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah we'll so it said that. I'm going to keep it close. You, there you go. It there said that. Go. So. <laughs> I'm going to keep it close. Now, Next we all know Takeoff was <laughs> killed in, on November 1st, 2022 yeah, in Houston, Texas at a bowling alley. Quavo didn't follow it up a Monday night, April 22nd, with his latest diss, Overholes in the B-word. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the feature has a cover art of Honcho depicting to choke out Chris Brown. Now, this was a video, uh, a picture Fine. that circulated online, but was later to find out that it was a joke. It was in a serious incident. Um, in the response, Quavo also brought up the history of Chris Brown and Rihanna. He also mentioned that he could turn a model into Sweetie, where Sweetie responded and said, well, hmm, Hopefully, the model he turns into me replies as she captioned that under a unopened DM from Quavo that Going happened in January of DM. 2024. Which was also, I believe, because I follow a page, was the day that she was side by side with Chris Brown at a Lakers game. I believe Ooh. Was it? You know, them cancers be petty, honey. Real oh, petty. Well, well, hey. well, the views well, express. <laughs> You know well But she's not wrong (laughs) I mean I don't really see the problem here But Yeah Y'all be bringing her name up Well Chris responded to Quavo's 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 uh, Response And said Quavo's (laughs) I I thought she was about to say Queef I was like (laughs) Who is that? (laughs) Quavo Chief Queef (laughs) Relax Relax You gotta relax (laughs) <laughs> Queef on those bars. Chris I'm responded on Quavo's bars. It was horrible. <laughs> Go ahead. Chris responded to Quavo's response and said, Google raps that bell is poop. Damn, I was excited. That don't even re- deserve a response. Which, in return, do we feel like that response was... <sighs> I mean, not only do we take that in account, but we can also take into account that on the response that Quavo submitted, he he actually used a portion of Takeoff's voice. Now, I don't know, or we don't know hey. if it's AI or if it was previously take, take recorded. Off, AI or real Takeoff made the whole song. Exactly. I, I feel <laughs> right. like it was a huge mistake to let Takeoff start that verse off. But it's just, it's just okay. So so on that on that tip, right? Pause. I just think. Have we? Have we? I'm just amazed. Have we entered the the era of rap beef where we're using other people's voice in a one on one rap battle? Not to mention, Chris just said that you the weakest link. You pull your brother take off out the grave. Yeah. For help. Yeah. That's the most. He needs to take off in the Holy Ghost. Bruh, Lambo, he just proved his point. The Holy Ghost. You lost. Yeah, that is that is kind of wild because if you. Yeah, the minute that you have to. First of all, the minute you have to go. Summon up the spirit of takeoff right. to help you in your right. lyrical rap beef. Hey, you lost. And Chris Brown said that he was the better Migo. Right. So why would you go right. directly right. Exactly. and dig him up? Like. Takeoff should have got on the track and said, brother. Because <laughs> why would you call me for this? <laughs> Not mama, brother. <laughs> how you tagging, how you tagging your, your dead nephew to yeah, receive no. an L? It's, it's, um, Unfortunate and just piggybacking off of the AI thing, 
I think and just because Drake did it doesn't mean that it's cool. Right. I think it's a little corny and I do too. Um, I agree. I think that the moment that you have to like and that's why I say, listen, y'all know I'm from the West Coast, so I need Kendrick to be all up in that. Trust mm-hmm. me, when I respond, it ain't gonna be no AI. That's, I am the real, real on. raw deal. Trust me on that. But I think that it's a little bit mm-hmm. of trolling and it's a little bit of a crutch because yeah. you ain't got it by yourself, so you, you gotta know, rely you know on. You know right. what I mean? It's it's and eh, you lost. You lost. You lost. You lost. What do y'all feel like that the line about takeoff was too far? Or in my mind, no. I felt like that no. was battle rap. I'm so used battle to rap. watching um, battle rap. He didn't disrespect say, takeoff though either. Um, it no. would have been different if he, he said much respect. Him. Exactly. It would have been also different if he said, "Go dig that nigga take take off up." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, sorry, I don't know if the N word counts, but <laughs> <laughs> for the real ones. <laughs> so um, <laughs> if he had said, "Go dig." Take off up, uh-huh. then we'd be like, "Hey, all right, Marie." But, right. but um, that's a good point. We yeah. we seen Gucci do it and nothing happened. So, um, how Gucci far is too, too far, far in bottle rap? Later. It's it's never too far because at the end of the day, we are survivors of listening to hit him up, right? I don't feel like nothing's too or far in, in rap. Okay. Or, I mean, it's I rap. Mean, it's art. It's. I met you. I ain't doing a love poem to you. I got issues with you. Right. <laughs> this ain't a poetry we slam. It. Now, it's one thing if we discuss, like, if we go in at, like, okay, so I'm so used to watching battle rap. Before you go into a scene, you know, if it's something I don't want you to talk about, we discuss that in the contract. But in this case, we just, we going at it. So, all, no holes bar. So I don't really see the issue with what was said with that track. I mean, to be honest, when you go on social media on the day that he died, that was literally the response that you see 90% of the people say it. So did he lie? They doing spoken word poetry. Chris yeah. Brown, you need to see me. Especially I mean, when you Michael think life sweet. is I mean, sweetie. Did, 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 did Chris Brown lie? Because at the end of did the day. Did he lie? Hey, hold on. Did he, no, did he lie? Because if he said takeoff was the best out of it and then Quavo got on stage and said that the whole Migo style came from takeoff. It did. They said it. He said it himself. So where they is, said it. Where's okay, the why? So Chris Brown basically just reaffirmed what, what they we already, already said. knew. I'm Correct. gonna say this though: out of all of the beefs in hip hop recently, this is the only one that's been a landslide to me. This one has this been quick one, too. This one has been a landslide. Back. You know, uh, in and out. And that's what I can appreciate about a battle. This is exactly what a battle means to me. I want to see you go back to back. I want to see tracks come consistently. <laughs> like y'all don't have to take it in the street. That's not that important. To me, but what I want to do Please is see y'all be consistent sweetie. with the craft. And Chris is not even a rapper, which it surprised me that the way he came back, it was like, oh, wait a minute. And maybe that was the shock factor for a lot of us because we didn't expect an R&B guy to come back as hard as he did. He has been the most prepared out of all the beefs that we heard. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's been the. He's been a. We did. We had to wait on Drake. Okay. Yes, we had we had we to, still waiting we, for Kendrick. We we still waiting on Kendrick. Doing we we honestly had to wait for Cole because it ain't like he automatic. He dropped that and then dropped the no, album as well. No, we definitely waited for the apology. We yeah. didn't at this point. Uh, you know, that's so that was. that's the only one who came out with the guns drawn. And you know, hey, shout out VA first of all because if we gonna do it, we gonna we we gonna get ignorant off top. It we ain't got made no filter. Me be a proud Virginian. I think Chris Brown is track. also his. He's got a big middle finger too. This is an industry that has turned their back on Chris Brown yes. this Constantly is an industry him, not even just the exactly not even just the industry but he probably knows people individually who have not had his back mm-hmm. in private mm-hmm. and and um you know, probably have just shunned him in public, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. right. Chris has had that, what do you call it, the black stain, if you will, on his career for a long time. And it's not by, I, I feel like we're in a world where we can forgive Charlie Sheen's and I, hold on, I get it, y'all, where it's like, okay, well, mm-hmm. we can't compare ourselves to the white man, with the right. but let's just compare ourselves to the white man. You have everybody from Alec Baldwin to Charlie Sheen to... Harvey um, Weinstein. Okay, who have had Correct. opportunities to be forgiven and still work yeah. in this business. Yeah. And for some reason, Chris Brown has never quite had the popularity that he once had prior to the situation, <laughs> but he has a staying power because, baby, we are not letting Chris Brown go. I don't care what they say. Hey, they shout out Jill Scott it. for that, too. Yeah. Jill yeah. Shout, shout out Jill, Jill Scott, Scott. for yes. staying because there's not too many people that you're going to see stand up for this young man okay. who is who we, I, I can say, I've witnessed in this course of his career somebody who has been troubled within situations but yeah. tried to make the better changes. Yeah. Have seen him 
get poked at with fake allegations mm. as well. So mm-hmm. to, to be able to see someone of a whole different ball mm-hmm. feel, um, era of music, embrace, embrace and Chris love. Brown and look beyond the mistakes and even receive the clap back, as yep. they call it, for Chris Brown and eat it and take it with grace, still with defense. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, Queen. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely appreciate her response in, in getting into that because for me, for her, it was more so about the art. It wasn't about what actually happened in the yeah. previous. It's like, we listening to this music. He ate you up. Okay. Like, it just is what it is. He it ate you up. He is a what creative. we wanted to see. Okay, and he showed he up. He ate and you up. Out. And what they, they call Chris Brown a super. Star. Hit the bell. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so the bell. <laughs> they won't a super star. mother effing star. No, that's not that. No, nah, they definitely called him a super Negro. Uh huh. So well, I, he is 100% a super Negro. He rap, sing, Thorough. dance, act. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's a super Negro. You can't yeah. kill him. Like, it it's just is what it is. Love. So the next story we're going to get into is this story about Brian McKnight. Now, Brian McKnight... My man going to throw the whole thing. I hate yeah. him. I hate him. I hate, I hate him. He might be the worst father on the planet. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Other than Moesha's dad. Baby. We, no, Frank Frank actually looked it up for Moesha. So I can't even give you that. Because Frank cared about Moesha. Frank, Frank, Frank had a lie for like Frank, nine seasons. Thank you. Frank Frank had a whole brother chilling like he was the cousin of the family. But <laughs> so he actually cared. Son. He had, he had, a, whole, he had a whole son. He, a whole he didn't son. deserve that respect. He had a whole That's son, a whole other topic. Like, Go ahead, no, my man. But he I'm cared sorry. about his kids. One thing, Frank, you will say, he had to bring his other son in for a reason because he clearly cared about his kids. Mm. All right, Frank. So you let's, gotta pass, let's you give gotta him pass, the grace. Frank. Let's give him the grace. You had what I thought but was anyway. your nephew cut, like living in my house. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's like, ain't about Frank right now. Man, no, Captain, it's not about I'm Frank. sorry. It's not about Frank Mitchell. Let's move on. <laughs> Golly. Now, some may say Brian McKnight is the worst father mm. on the planet. Now, in his recent Instagram live video, he had a Q&A where he referred to his four oldest children as products of sin. I know. Who the heck you ain't? <laughs> Yo, Brad me not a wild the scene. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Brad me a wild. I like the Alicia He went on further anyway. to say, <laughs> in order to live a life that you love, you have to get rid of evil and negative, even if the evil and negative is related. And that is in reference to his kids. Like, it's not his ex-wife. It's not anybody else. He's talking about his specific biological kids. Mm -hmm. Now, his son, Nico McKnight, responded to his father's hurtful hurtful words on social media, telling the shade room, I'm evil. I'm wild. This is the guy who used to make me clean his used condoms out of his bathroom at 15 years old before Lisa got home. And he's calling me evil. (laughs) For sure. He used to make him do what? <laughs> exactly. Throw that trash can, boy. Exactly. So he follows up to say, the guy who forged our signatures or our names is evil for sure. So he went on to discuss his thoughts about his father, Orn X, formerly known as Twitter. McKnight's ex-wife, Julia, responded in an Instagram video the point at the end of every negative situation, whether it's illness, whether it's foul that you have to deal with this because they keep entering your life, whether they're no longer giving any more energy to it, it's to only keep you down to where they thought they had you because they were author of extreme abusive situations emotionally, mentally, she emotionally and mentally, she said. Mm. Now. Based on Brian McKnight's past, we've seen him say several things about his older kids, basically denouncing his older kids and accepting the younger kids that he just created. Yep. And the one that wasn't even his. But how do you do we how do we really maneuver this as if this it, I, we're listening to a father say that he doesn't want to have any dealings with his previous kids, but keeps bringing in emotional baggage and situations to keep bringing them up where they're consist, consistently being hurt and scarred by the <laughs> he keeps saying it's very toxic. Very toxic. I am situation. so triggered as OK, let's just go there. Let's go there. I'm not surprised that his current wife is a non-black woman. 
right. I am not hmm. surprised that, vibe. that the, the the mothers of the the children made in sin are black women <laughs> right. because Brian McKnight you are an artist I, he's probably not even listening but listen to this <laughs> you are an artist you have made your bank your coin your whole career off of the emotions of black women you're tired you're used up you are probably the lowest it can get when it comes to a father you're not even that and I, I think mean, the best yeah. thing that we can do I wouldn't do, even call him that exactly the best thing that we can do is love on Brian McKnight Jr. who also he, he is an artist Clearly, you guys go support him okay right. go support Brian McKnight Jr. He has a beautiful catalog of music. Like the the best thing that we can do is love on the kids because at this rate, Brian McKnight, nobody needs to be at his shows. I guarantee you, if there's somebody at his show, they don't know, they don't look like us. If y'all no. know what I'm saying, and right. I think you right. do. Right. Okay, like this is the man who is so far removed from the black experience at this point that it it's 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 just disgusting. I think it's very unfortunate that he would publicly get online mm-hmm. to to basically us to unacknowledge his kids that and we're he's not had that. previously. We're not to that. re-acknowledge his new kids as if he's never had it. Okay. I think that's disgusting. I think that's the worst excuse you could be as a father mm. because I, I, I don't give a damn how old your kids are. Mm. That's they still have to see this as you can see they're responding on social media mm-hmm. where their friends I don't mm-hmm. I, again I don't care how old they are where their friends their family members their cousins they see this mm-hmm. they're being sent this so if you truly don't care about your kids why do you keep bringing them up you can ignore these questions you can not acknowledge it you can not keep e- uh, pushing emotional trauma on them if you want to act like they don't exist it's just that simple I think he has a, a lot of unhealed issues and anger issues, specifically with women, possibly back women. I don't want to put the thing on that, but I'm going to say there's a lot of issues with a certain type of woman that he needs to acknowledge. Um, and it says a lot for the current wife to remain silent and, um, quote unquote, in her place. Why would she this. not? Her kids are being accepted. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Well, the last story we have tonight, which is actually, I'm going to give you the to give more details about it, but okay. I'm going to give the overview. Okay. So we seen as of recently, DC Young Flat had a, had a actual show, right? <laughs> and in this particular show, he happened to be booed. Now we've seen several different responses in regards to why he was booed or what was the situation. But because you are a comic, Mike. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is more of mm-hmm. something for your lane to discuss. So mm-hmm. if you want to give us more of a backstory Ooh. as to what happened, what? that would be dope. Okay, so pretty much <coughs> DC Young Fly did his set. His set was great up until that one joke where he's supposed to be talking about how he learned life lessons from a dope fiend in his neighborhood, right? <laughs> now, this is a joke that's a little executed a lot slowly. You know what I'm saying? It's a story. And I guess that was so new to that crowd because we know DC Young Fly for being just wild all over the place, Mm -hmm. super animated. So to see him sit down and talk so calm and casually, even though he's setting up a punchline and Uh a joke. Got it. You know what I'm saying? The crowd is like, bro, what? Bro, you need to heal and and, and you need to get off the stage. Boo. You know, and. Okay. Listen. What I don't like is people online saying that he's never been funny and oh man, I didn't uh-huh. like him anyway. Meanwhile, you guys are, are tuning in to 85 South so much. Okay. And these same people, that's number one. Number two, mm-hmm. every comic has one of those shows. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Where you could, what worked last show? But may honestly, not work maybe in he did show. have a day where he was reflecting. He talked, really talked about where he was at a little bit more that day, but he had a point. Yeah. And they didn't let him get there. Right. Um, mm. I'm about to say, yeah, I think as, um, especially if you go to a comedy show, I think you as a viewer, an audience, need to have the emotional intelligence to let this joke play mm-hmm. out right. a little bit. Right. Or instead of booing, just don't say nothing. Don't laugh. You know what? That's the best thing you can give a comedian. Thank don't you. give him your I didn't think about it, but now that we're talking about it, this kind of reminds me of when I went to see Marlon Wayne's last mm-hmm. year. So... Around that time we went to see Marlon Wayne's, it was very like this is 
mind you, one of my first comedy shows that I've been to, like a live one, yeah, where it was. Yeah. So, a lot of the show he talked about his mom, and you know, at that time she had recently passed. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we all can't relate to it, but I could understand where he was going with it and his whole set was his jokes I think were based around it and it was like you had to kind of go on a journey with him to understand where he was going right right and I think with this crowd they probably didn't go on that journey with him because they wanted him to be wilding out there we go and they didn't want him to be the problem the problem is us and I'm gonna give you the problem a lot of times is always us so entitled we are not ready for what's new Mm -hmm. okay so for instance um, you looked at run tell that right but run tell that wasn't the same Martin as Martin the show. No, you get what I'm saying. There was there's a lot of growth that we're not allowing these comedians to actually have. They're going through life as well, and yeah. to be able to have that type of pain yeah. and then form a joke around it. Yeah, just hit me out for a hot second. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're not thinking in a dynamic mind. We want you to be the clown, the jester mm-hmm. that we have seen you be on mm-hmm. Wild and Out Correct. this whole mm-hmm. time. Correct. The person right that way. we've seen on the, you know, on on what yeah. is it? you know, but we're not we're not really giving him what if he does this one on one stand up by himself? Now he has to be much more than what Chico Bean yeah. and the other gentleman has. He has but to show his real life. You know what? That brought me back to another point because if you think about it, right? He's given a whole show about whatever the case is, because I don't know what the gist of the show was about, but he is coming off of a grief of right. losing his kid's right. mother. So we don't crazy. know if that day, it was a hard day for him. Okay. So it took him a little while to get his thoughts yeah, out. Plus he went straight to work. Like and then right now after, after that, died. was there not like a BBL joke where he said, like, I'll right. try to figure out why y'all do this because right. Right. I watched somebody I love die. Right. It's 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 kind of like I said, I feel like it's still a us thing. Right. All right. So Chris Rock, Chris Rock gets smacked. Right. Then he go on tour. What's the first thing we waiting to hear? Why he got smacked? Uh, okay, addressed. so we we and, and he goes directly <laughs> into it, right? So we expecting this young man to still do the happy, fun, skipping, wilding out thing when he just went through a public loss. Yeah. What do we not? You get what I'm saying? But we see, don't expect these people to be able to. You, you're not wrong. The thing is, though, also as a comedian, you got to read the room. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're in a certain environment. Mm-hmm. You're in a certain atmosphere And you know these people Are used to a certain type of energy I get it He wanted to try it out But that just won't the crowd okay, And that happens Was the joke um, Piss poor Was it Did the joke even Did we get to the point Where he made the joke And then we started booing Or was this just a crowd Who was upset Because they weren't getting Funny DC yeah, that, that In part. five minutes Okay that's the they problem They didn't give him a chance That's, that's the, the problem crowd. to me yeah, Because that's the crowd. why If you're going And you're paying For a comedic experience then you have to switch up your understand, set Understand exactly Sit back relax Drink your drink Shut up And let for the, wait for the but job But honestly out. Okay can, the I, can I be realistic I'm sorry I don't mean to cut you off Lambo But can I be realistic How do you know You're yeah. a Comic. You're walking into a room. You don't know what the how can you, is. How can you, you read be the high room? Too. Mike, you tell us. How do you know? Oh lord! You don't care. You <laughs> just Look at Mike. Your, your but, it, stuff out. but if I'm if I'm doing a show in Southside Richmond. I already know but what, what Southside he, he Richmond not from is all about. South, right? Say he did a show but, in Alabama. See, Chico has an amazing ability of going around the city yeah. before the show. He will always incorporate the city. the city. Seeing the culture, seeing yeah. how, you know what I'm saying, before he hits that stage because his ability to take whatever's going on in the city and make it a joke works for him, right? Not to say DC has to be Chico, but you still, you have to... If I'm, <laughs> I've watched Carlos do that. It, right. Mm-hmm. If if I'm going to Mobile, Alabama, I'm not going to talk about Jackson, Mississippi. Ooh, you know baby. what I'm saying? Well, I don't. I don't remember where they were for that particular show. They were in Atlanta City, New Jersey. So not to mention, he already a country boy up in New Jersey. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's them not hard Italian to find material to hear that. There, though. It ain't hard. I got plenty of material. <laughs> <laughs> plenty. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> Baby, they got mob cousins that they got to put money Baby, on. Baby, it ain't they even ain't that. It's the rats in the <laughs> alone. <ain't> to <laughs> so it's, it's actually three faults here. Okay. I think as a crowd, you give them a chance, like y'all said. At the same time, if you're DC, just take a minute to just breathe, brother. You right. just went straight to work after losing your wife. You're right. But um, also, no. if you're going to clock in, go to work. Don't sit here and give them it. Listen, 
Especially if it's not something that they're used to, right? You gotta, some people pay for yeah. a certain set, and that's just what it is. So, yeah, yeah. it's the roll of the dice in common. Or some yeah. people are entitled and don't need to come to community shows. Yeah. I mean that could be it too. I don't I don't I, I can't I don't see no fault from the young man to be honest with you. Yeah, even if you say read the room, man, you can't guarantee like he could have did that whole set somewhere else and that last joke could have went well somewhere else. Right. The whole set so I can't just say, Oh, because I'm in New Jersey, I'ma change this one right. last joke. I think that's hard. Like, you know, but like, I understand what Mike is saying. Yeah. Or like audience. you kinda have to know where you're at to kinda like perform mm-hmm. for them. Because yeah. remember, anytime Cat Williams or whatever have come here, they've mentioned like a food spot that they ate here and they related yeah. to the crowd by doing that. Am I wrong? You're not yeah. wrong. So I but mean, that talks to the beauty of a comedian who can kind of do that and pull inspiration for their routine from going around in the city. And maybe that was just the day where he was like, no, I'm gonna just stick to the I trip. think it was just today, and that day going. he might have been in his feelings. And, and, and y'all deserve off days. Comedians deserve yeah. off days. You can't always be on. Also, of course, we know he's been going like, through something very hard. He lost his kid's mother. Right. He got all daughters. Breathe, breathe. People on. aren't expecting that though. If they, they see you out on that stage, breathe they in. are expecting you for you to leave your drama, <laughs> including your grief at the dough. Yeah. Get on this stage and make us laugh. If you're not right. funny, we're gonna boo you. And as wild and played out as that is, and for an audience, hey, sometimes you gotta let them know, and that's on Apollo. Well, I do say that to say yeah. that I think DC does deserve grace in that situation. Because great- we've seen him do great But he should also things. be able to handle a boo. And I'm a, yeah, I don't think say, he was really oh, faced by the boo to be I, honest I, mean, I think it was more so the internet like oh yeah. he was booed oh my god cause the man could have did a whole nother he could have did that same show the next night and killed and it, killed and, it. They, and, they, uh-huh. and they wouldn't even put that out there right who the who was booing right. me right that's you but you know make that a joke all out of comes that. from social media sometimes they rather see you fail before they see you succeed Correct. so you have to know how to handle things and move accordingly I don't think it's a sometimes but sometimes. I mean it is what it is it's all about how you take it take it on the chain and keep it moving right so that's that's the note of today You gonna take it on the chin And, and keep as, it moving As most comedians say They got your money anyway already So mm-hmm. go ahead boo You done paid me <laughs> you got to pay me pay, pay for the booze Go get another drink <laughs> Get your Long Island I'll be here for another 10 minutes yep. well, trying, Get up make, make the booze longer this time Uh huh. Get up so I can see your big back Walking down the aisle I'm <laughs> done I'm so excited to have y'all here and, and commenting on these topics But that's the end of the segments for tonight I'm super excited to have everybody here And I'm yes. glad that we went over this But I do want to give y'all a heads up for next month Next month we will be putting out a post in email where y'all can access questions Ooh. or whatever an advice section and I'm, I'm hyped to get into it y'all send us y'all qu- relationship job money whatever if you need advice we'll do it anonymously anonymously you don't have to tell us who you is we cool with it but we super excited to roll that out next month so I want y'all to make sure that y'all send that information in we'll go ahead and post that on the blacktop where you can send it in or you can do a voicemail or call us in on live general but that's that's it for tonight and that is Miss Milan news topics for four twenty what's today? Twenty four? Four twenty four. Four. Well, that was headlines, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by one person. One person only. The one and only Miss Milan.